Hi, I'm Kelly Vaughn and welcome to Inside Indy. And uh, man, it's been a rough, what, five or six months since the COVID-19 pandemic hit um, our country and the world. And of course that has affected the job market and the economy uh, in ways that we could never even imagine. And, uh, but there is hope uh, because there are, are other opportunities um, always emerging on the horizon and here to talk about those opportunities specifically in the insurance industry are Chris Lowry and you are Senior Vice President for Workforce and Careers at Ivy Tech Community College. Welcome Chris. Thank you. And then we also have Emil Ikeor who is Founder and CEO of Inno Power Indy. Welcome back Emil. Thank you Kelly. Thank you for having he is, me. He's becoming a regular on this show by the way. <laughs> And then we have Ann Duncan, she's marketing representative for Arlington Row, and she'll be here to talk about um, the insurance industry as well. Welcome to you all to Inside Indy. Uh, man, as I mentioned at the opening, it's, it's kind of rough out there right now. And there are people, especially our young people, but beyond that, looking for new opportunities. And you're saying then that there, there um, is hope in the insurance industry? Who'd like to go first to respond to that? I can take that, Kelly. The okay. industry, there's a grain of the industry, and I'm a great representative of that. See, <laughs> that there's a lot of lot of baby boomers, and over 70% of the industry is over the age of 55. So we project that 50% turnover probably in the next 10 years. So there's lots of opportunities, but we don't have as many young people coming into the industry mm. is what we need to fill these jobs. And the insurance industry is a big industry in the state of Indiana, as well as nationwide. And there are lots of opportunities and it touches all industries. We're oftentimes the second call after there's any kind of emergency situation. So there's certainly uh, some opportunities in insurance in the state. Okay. And so in order to be able to work in the industry, obviously we need um, to be educated. And so I understand that Ivy Tech Community College, uh, Chris has an opportunity to, to earn a certificate? Yes, Kelly, that's correct. Um, we have been working with Anne and uh, her colleagues from the insurance industry for quite a while to really frame that up. Uh, and, and our approach at the college, especially in the past few years, has been to talk with people who are in you know, various uh, business sectors and to say, so what are your needs? You know, rather than us just guessing, uh, I wouldn't be the person you would want to guess about what the insurance industry needs and is uh, because of her expertise and her, her tenure there. So what we've done is collaborate with, as I said, uh, Anne and uh, her colleagues from the insurance industry to say, so what exactly are the specific skills that you're seeking um, you know, to uh, to fill these really good positions, and they've helped us outline those. And that has resulted in a nine-hour certificate. And certainly we can talk more about that because um, the, the certificate allows an individual to enter the insurance industry, again, a great industry, uh, but also with uh, potential for growth. Uh, growth uh, while in a position or, or with one of those employers, but also in their own academic career. So if you think about paralleling that growth in career along with growth from the academic standpoint and continuing to, uh, yeah, I guess the way I think of it is move from sort of that ladder of a job to a better job to a career. I think this is a perfect example of that. Okay. So in that, um, in that you said it's nine months, right? Uh, nine credit hours nine credit hours. So how long does it take to, to complete that particular course? Someone could easily do that in a one semester period. And, and honestly, even with our new um, eight week terms, someone could, uh, and Anne, you jump in here and tell me if I'm wrong on this, uh, complete that within an eight week period. Now that's, that's probably a lot and um, uh, for some individuals in just that short time frame, but certainly within a traditional 16 week semester. Okay, and did you wanna to add to that? Yeah, the uh, original certificate that we uh, kicked off in 2017 was 21 credit hours, Kelly. And over the summer, we collaborated with Ball State University, Indiana State University and Butler University, who all have four-year degree programs to help rewrite that curriculum. And it's now reduced down to nine hours. So it's something that can be finished within a semester 
and then the, the individual would probably be able to go out to an entry level position. They could continue their education at Ivy Tech to get a two year degree. And then if they choose, they could go on to one of our three other insurance schools in Indiana and get a four year degree. Mm, okay. Now, you know, I, I know about insurance in terms of buying life insurance or something for my car, or, but for a person who's interested in that career, what, what are the opportunities? Is it about being an agent or are there various opportunities within the industry? There are a lot of opportunities, Kelly, and I think there's a misconception about the industry that it's all about sales. A lot of people think you got to knock on doors or, or be a salesperson, but um, there are job opportunities at insurance agencies, at carriers, so uh, a customer service representative. Then, of course, we've talked about insurance sales. There are claims opportunity. There are actuarials. Uh, we need IT folks. We need folks with accounting. It touches all industries. When you think about even at Ivy Tech, I think there's an automotive certificate. That person, if they also got the insurance certificate, could go on into becoming a claims person adjusting auto claims. There's a lot of talk about coding. There's a lot of talk about cyber liability. We sell data breach policies. So mm. it touches lots of lots of industries. Okay. Well, this is for Emil. Um, why is it important for students to engage in the industry to develop those credentials and partnership with the industry members? And how does it help the state economy? Thank you, Kelly. Um, as you know, for decades, um, the traditional way was industry waited for the talent to graduate from, co from college and then you get to pick the best of the best um, to come into your industry. Well, we, today we know that model doesn't really work efficiently anymore. Industry has to have skin in the game in the development process and that starts in high school and in some cases even before high school. Um, today, um, what we've witnessed with COVID and what we know is um, the number one word used in minority communities, especially, is access. Um, sometimes people are not aware of the opportunities that are available for them out there. As you hear, the key word that's been used with Anne and Chris has been opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Um, the program gets designed, the insurance industry and Ivy Tech, and they've designed a magnificent program. But now, how do we articulate that program to the community so people see this as a um, a pathway to upper mobility. And um, so what we do is say to young people is there's opportunity available for you. And here's a pathway to get that opportunity. And here are your options. Um, your options are you can take this course at Ivy Tech, get exposed to the industry with job shadows, speaker series where professionals from the industry are coming in to engage these young people, to make them familiar about the industry. Then if you graduate with this certificate, Nine hours sounds simple to a young 17 year old. Um, it's doable. I can take this nine hours and I can actually get a certificate and make $17 an hour when I graduate from high school. That gives them a vision for what's next. Um, what we miss a lot of times with young people is not understanding what comes next. Um, if I don't go to college, have I failed? What the insurance industry is saying, what Ivy Tech is saying is no, you haven't. Um, Ivy Tech has a pathway for you that you can begin in high school. So what we do is come along with Ivy Tech and the insurance industry and say, how do we eliminate the barriers for these young people if they have to pay for this course at Ivy Tech? How do we work with the schools to make sure they have access and can take these courses? So together, we work to design this program to say, how do we reach the customer and make sure the customer can maximize this program? So. We're excited about the opportunity and the trilateral partnership here um, mm -hmm. to do this. Um, but we also feel like this is such a model for other industries to follow um, that we can codify this and take this to other industries to say, when we talk about equity, when we talk about creating opportunities for young people, when we talk about staying in a city that um, we say ranks in the bottom fifth for upward mobility, but yet we have all of these opportunities available something is missing, there's a gap somewhere. So, you know, just excited to be working with the insurance industry and Chris to just connect the dots and eliminate those gaps. And um, this is such a powerful model for us to codify and share with others on how industry can have skin in the game in the development process 
and then how we can maximize programs like this and share these outcomes as we go. Okay, wow. And, and you're right about kids. If you just kind of leave them hanging there, they don't know what to do. Get them started in something, get them, get them engaged, and that gets the wheels turning. And then you don't know what's next. That develops into owning your own business one day. I mean, it's, it's but they have to be involved, engaged. And again, if it's if the goal is too far out there, like how do you even get started? So I, I think you're right on point in that. So we talked about young people, what, but what about adults for this um, certificate and getting involved in this way? Is it for anybody? So there's a lot of programs now for the adult learners at Ivy Tech. And there are people out there looking for a career change that have been, uh, displaced from their existing jobs. So this is a great time for the adult learners as well, uh, Kelly. Okay, yeah. so how people, oh, go ahead. Was somebody gonna add to that? Oh, I'm sorry, Kelly. Yeah, I was just gonna add on to that really quickly. And Anne, thank you so mm -hmm. much. So whether it's this certificate uh, in insurance or whether it's something in advanced manufacturing or logistics or you know, more broadly in business, healthcare, IT, there are a number of programs, including shorter terms such as these that can be you know, completed pretty quickly that are available. And, and we're seeing a tremendous response uh, in our partnership uh, with business and industry as represented by Anne, with uh, individuals reaching uh, younger students, adult students, like in the instance of our partnership with Emil, uh, but then also in our partnership with uh, state government. We're literally right now reaching out to individuals in Indiana who are unemployed and underemployed with partnership with the state to make these programs uh, more readily aware, you know, to make sure folks are more readily aware of them uh, and, you know, helping point people in the direction of, you know, good and promising jobs that can result from these types of credentials. Okay, sounds good to me. So uh, if people want to take advantage of this to sign up or to learn more about the insurance industry uh, certificate, how do they how do they sign up? Well, Ivy Tech, Ivy Tech has all the resources on their platforms and um, has all the capacity to, to engage people, to walk them through the process of signing up and all the opportunities they have to the business administration program and getting an insurance certificate. Um, but what we want people in our community to understand that Ivy Tech is a huge resource for us. Um, like you said, people have been furloughed, people are looking for other opportunities. But when I talk to people that are in those situations, they don't see Ivy Tech as that resource to get them back into the workforce um, and get them upskilled to, to go back into the workforce. So. What I would say to people is if you go to Ivy Tech's website, all of these opportunities are listed there. And as we develop this program, we'll have a way for people to directly associate with the insurance industry to get more information. Um, but we really want people to see Ivy Tech as this resource to be able to go on the Ivy Tech platforms to find out about how do I get into insurance? What Anne has done a wonderful job of is um, putting this resource on the forefront of Ivy Tech's platform so people okay. can have access to it. Okay, as we got the website on the screen there for you and uh, I've really enjoyed this conversation. I've been enlightened about the insurance industry. And I, so we're putting the word out there to get people on board and, and uh, help uh, rebuild this um, uh, economy. Uh, Chris Lowry, Emil Ikeor and uh, Ann Duncan, thank you all so much for joining us on Inside Indy. Thank you so much, thank Kelly. You. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. 
You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hi, and welcome to the Home and Finance Show. I'm Kelly Vaughn, and um, I'm not your host <laughs> of the show. In fact, the host of the Home and Finance Show are two home buying and selling experts right here in Indianapolis, and they are Janice Bradley. And she is the owner and broker of JB Real Estate uh, Consultants. Good morning. Good morning. And then we have our second host, uh, Diana Rice Wilkerson, who is a mortgage specialist with Fairway Independent Mortgage. Good morning. Welcome to your own show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, Thank these, you. these ladies, you may not know them from WHMB TV 40, but they're pretty famous uh, on the radio. So tell folks where people can listen to you and follow you um, on radio. Well, we're on Saturdays afternoon from 1 to 2 on 1310 AM, The Light. All right. 317-239-1310 is the number to call in on. Okay, okay. So now, Diana, how long have you guys been doing radio? About 18 years. Eight, get out of here. Yeah. 18 years, love it. So now here again, you're on WHMB TV 40. So what prompted the move from radio to television? We hired somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's that, there's that, so. We actually wanted to uh, expand our reach um, mm -hmm. from radio land to television land. And um, Kelly, as you know, we've been talking about this for a few years. Mm -hmm. And so as mm -hmm. Janice said, we have been blessed to work with the team who has helped us get to this point. Okay, now, uh, people tuning in, they wanna know about the new show. So what can people expect from the home and finance show, television? Well, I would say pretty much the same. It'll mm -hmm. probably be in a more condensed, you know, fashion. But you know, our goal, of course, is to educate the community. Um, we're known for providing straight talk in the home and financing of new purchases, new construction, um, listing, selling, refinancing. You name it. We mm -hmm. just really try to get the word out to the community. And again, we're we're proud to be able to share with the listening audience straight talk. Okay, okay. Now, I wanted to ask Diana, you, you know, the straight talk and letting people, um, providing them with all this information. So there are apparently challenges out there uh, for folks who are trying to buy a home, sell yes. a home. Yeah, the home buying process um, is a little challenging, I think for almost anyone, simply mm -hmm. because it's brand new. Uh, typically people may do it only once twice, maybe three times in a lifetime, and rules change all the time. So our goal is to make sure that our uh, community is prepared and understands exactly what's going to happen, um, because the better prepared they are, the easier the process will be. Uh, we also, too, help people understand how to get around barriers. So oftentimes folks will actually disqualify themselves because they'll hear information from others or television and then they'll decide, you know, that I can't buy a house and they won't pursue it. So one of the things that we try to do in, in giving this straight talk is how you get around barriers mm -hmm. and do not let those barriers stop you from, from pursuing your dream. Uh, we always talk about there's life after foreclosure and life after bankruptcy and life after a catastrophic a catastrophic event, losing a job or whatever. And this helps folks know, hey, I too can buy a house. Mm -hmm. I just need a plan and I need a partner or a few partners to work with me and we can make it happen. All right, and you said that key word there, uh, plan. Before we talk more about those plans, mm -hmm. I want you two to, to um, tell us about yourselves, your roles on the show, your roles in your careers, so the, the audience can get to know you better one-on-one. -on -one. So let's start with Janice. Let's start with Janice. Okay. Well, I'll be telling my age. There's no if and buts about it. Just sharing with you uh -huh. who I am. Uh -huh. um, actually, I started right after high school, right at the, at the telephone company. So I worked for Indiana Bell. And you say Indiana Bell, everybody knows how old that is. Right. For 15 yeah, everybody's years. going sprint. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. Like, what's Indiana that? Bell. Indiana yeah. Bell, exactly. And, and it just got to the point where I decided that... Um, my head wasn't shaped like a bell anymore. Mm. And I just had an opportunity where I met someone who was in real estate. 
and I don't know what happened to me. It just, this was just something I knew. It just warmed my heart, and that's how I started. So I started in March of 80. I have been in the business um, 40 years Wow. in March, March of 80, right? Okay. And I tell you what, this is who I am. I love the home buying purchase, uh, home buying opportunity to help homeowners. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, didn't come from a family of home, uh, home ownership. Um, I don't have any uh, problems just kind of sharing. Uh, we just had some hard times growing up and we actually live with a lot of family members, a good part of my childhood. So the very fact that um, all there's four of us, every last one of us own our own home, some of us two and three homes, you know, it just shows you what can happen, you know, mm -hmm. in, a, in a lifetime when you actually um, have that goal. So with so much instability, as you said, as a mm -hmm. child, maybe mm -hmm. living with relatives mm -hmm. and, and in that uh, position, I can see where that would set you up to, um, to love this profession, Absolutely. to seek that yeah. stability yeah. and provide, providing that stability to so many other people. Well, with me working at the telephone company, I was exposed to quite a few um, individuals who bought a home. And I just said to myself, <laughs> they're doing exactly what I'm doing. I can buy a home. And that's how I started. I just said, well, this is for me also. So wow. that's where the blessing came yeah. in. Yeah, in interesting how our hardships and our challenges and our journey mm -hmm. that God sends us through, how it yeah, you know, comes to fruition with helping others, mm -hmm. as you have for so many so many years. So, Diana, what about you? Uh, your humble beginnings. Oh, humble beginnings. Well, I'm from a family of eight. There were six kids and we rented quite a bit. And uh, it's kind of hard to rent a, a property when you have six kids. Um, and my dad was a paper hanger painter. And so, um, you know, we moved not a whole lot, but kind of more than what we'd like. And he would have to fix the homes up and that sort of thing. And finally, we rented a house that he was able to buy. He was a veteran. He used his VA to do that. I think that was brand new to him. He did not know he could do that. And so um, we ended up, um, well, they, my parents ended up buying a home and stabilized our family. As far mm -hmm. as getting into this business, I started in banking many years ago. I started on the retail side of the bank, making loans for, you know, buying cars and personal loans and things of that nature, and then moved to the mortgage side of the business. And when I moved to the mortgage side of the business, interest rates were 18% mm -hmm. fixed rates. I recall the day when Whoa. we were, <laughs> yeah. folks were picking. What did she yeah. say? 18. Yes. 18. If you wanted a fixed rate mortgage, it was 18. So what year was that? In that, 80. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 80, 80, 81. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. in school, man. <laughs> that was a good thing, okay. <laughs> no one can forget. I remember when rates dropped to 9% and and we couldn't close loans fast enough. People were refinancing and we couldn't close loans fast enough. And um, so people were picketing outside of the bank because they were losing their interest rate. I mean, this was going on around the country because just everyone was trying to get off of the 18% onto the nine or yeah. <laughs> off of a negative amortization loan mm. onto a fixed. I mean, it was kind of crazy. So anyway, I ended up in that position originating, then became manager of underwriting and then operations. So and manager of operations, um, I learned the business from the inside out, which was the bomb because processing closing, I closed loans. I remember going into my first closing, I couldn't even pronounce the word mortgage. You know, it's spelled M-O-R-T-G-A-G-E. Mm -hmm. I couldn't pronounce it. I had it. to practice too. Yeah, I, I was like, <laughs> mortgage and, um, and so anyway, you know, just through that whole process, I mean, when I got into the, um, when I graduated high school, which was 68, that was when fair housing laws were coming into play, exactly. saying it was discriminatory to, you know, redline and deny loans because the person was black or, you know, a variety of, of other things. So a lot of this, these changes have just happened in the most recent 50, 50 years, and I've been able to be a part of that. After uh, the bank, I went to INHP. Indianapolis Neighborhood Housing yeah. Partnership, mm -hmm. where I was the director of mortgage programs there, and then Habitat for Humanity, where I was, I was executive director there. I have a heart for helping people become homeowners, and it's really tied to that low, moderate income family. So, mm -hmm. and then after Habitat, I decided I really wanted to do something more that connected me with the people as opposed to administration managing, um, and so connected with Janice. We had met, actually we met that when was I was at question. the bank. How did you guys come together? This is some powerful forces coming here. <laughs> Lots of experience merging together. We met at the bank. I was at the bank. Yeah, Indiana National. Indiana National Bank. <laughs> We're telling our age again. Yeah, so we are. Understand, we so are. younger people it's understand what that is. That, that was a bank here. Once God, here. here. 
<laughs> and Janice came to the office. I can't remember the reason why. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I think it was some type of workshop that was going, going on, on. Okay. you know, and I don't know how I even met you, but I remember being in your office. Yeah, yeah. And when I got in the business, when I went back on the street, as they would say, <laughs> to connect with the people, I'm like, I'm going to reach out to Janice Bradley. And so I connected with Janice. And then shortly after that, um, and, and I know folks will know these names, um, Yvonne Ferguson yes. uh, and Natalie Chavis mm -hmm. were hosting... Oh. Legally Speaking on 1310. Mm -hmm. I had financed Natalie's home and they decided they wanted to do a show on real estate. So she called, she said, Diana, we'd like you to be a guest on Legally Speaking to talk about real estate. I said, I only know the finance side. You know, I think you need a real estate agent. And I said, oh, can I bring Janice Bradley? Absolutely. So we meet, we go in, we do, <laughs> we do the show and we come out of the studio and someone here at the table has a bright idea. <laughs> You know how those, where yeah, those go, yeah. right? Janice That's all what? I have is ideas. Janice say? <laughs> You're Someone supposed at the to do table had a bright it. idea. Oh, God. And the bright idea led to us talking to the, um, the like a, a director yes. of, of programming mm -hmm. at Radio One. Mm -hmm. So we go to him and we talk about this bright idea. He says, you know, my grandmother raised me. She talked to me about not getting any girl pregnant, right? Finishing mm -hmm. school, going on to be successful never told me about credit, never told me about lending, didn't know. Mm. And he said, you, we would love to have you guys do this show. Connor is struggling in school. Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. Why don't you understand me? I do. This is what it feels like for kids with learning and attention issues redirecting to understood.org. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. My parents weren't fluent in English, so in school I had to be independent and take initiative. And that's how I handle every project I get.